Hi everyone and welcome to Season 2, Episode 2 of Reputation Rebuild at Orgs Air with me, the United City FM. Welcome along. So, loads to get through today. We've got a, a few transfers to talk about that happened just after last episode. We've got a ton of games to review in terms of the results that we've had. And today, we've got a top of the table clash in Ligue 2. We sit in second and our opponents today, Lorient, sit in top. And we are two points behind. Can we reel them in and overtake them and take top spot today? Let's find out. Welcome back to Orgs Air, everybody. And it has been going really, really well. Sitting in second place on 17 points after eight matches. Uh, Lorient, our opponents today, sit in top after eight matches. They've got 19, two, two above, uh, above us, which is you know, we're doing really, really well. I'm very happy with it. So straight into the fixture list and the results that we've had. We played Troy in the last episode. Since then, I've had, what's that, seven league matches since then. And mostly they've gone okay. A bit inconsistent here and there. A couple of draws recently, which have been a bit of a problem. But we had a good couple of wins early on just to get some points on the board. It got us a bit of momentum. And it's going pretty well, actually. Um, there's one or two issues in terms of personnel. We've had Yanis, who is uh, one of our young stars from last season, bedded himself into the first team and he's playing a different role this season. Has been, been doing brilliantly. He's got three in five games, but the reason he's only played five games is because he's been out for about the last three weeks, unfortunately. Um, and he's still got a couple of days to go. He's got ankle ligament issues. Um, so we've really, really missed him at the top of our uh, striking unit, holding that play up and getting a few goals himself. It's been unfortunate. The others that have come in have done okay, but not have, uh, haven't really got the goals that he uh, looked like he was potentially going to get for us this season. So we need to get him back fit and healthy. Um, the, the plan for today is Lorient, as I say, um, but you can see here, what have we done? We've had uh, Le Mans, we got a 2-1 win, um, and there's two names in there that are um, new into the club that have, have worked really we uh, well for us in central midfield. Um, we're going to talk about the, the um, incomings in a minute that we've had since the last episode, because there were some issues. We got uh, a 1-0 win against uh, Toulouse. Uh, Amion then beat us 2-1, disappointing, away from home, didn't show up at all. We got a goal from Yanis, but that was the highlight for us and the rest of it, we looked out of sorts. We bounced back though against Orleans um, and uh, Saki got a penalty and Yanis got a 92nd minute goal, 2-0 win for that one. Uh, Grenoble was uh, again one of these uh, uh, one of these things where we just dropped off the pace a little bit in the last couple of games. Got a couple of draws that I wasn't expecting, but we didn't quite look as sharp as we had done. But it's this sort of section of games that we've missed Yanis for, and it's been quite uh, obvious, I think. But we still managed a couple of goals. We got a win against Nancy in there, and that has all led us to fit, uh, to be in second place in the competition so far. You can see that our goal difference isn't as good as uh, Lorient. We've got, um, if we go onto the main page, you can see that we've got uh, 11th placed highest goal scoring for the season so far with uh, 10 goals, which isn't fantastic, is it? We do need to score more, but it's the goals conceded that's very good. Five goals conceded, um, and that's, you know, third best in the league. So we're doing pretty well there. So... Since the last episode, um, the transfer window was open for about another week or so. I was trying to do a bit of business and then some things made me do a bit of business. So let's go and check that out. So I was in the market for a central midfield player anyway. But then the thing that made me have to do some business is the club sold my goalkeeper uh, out from underneath me. Uh, uh, Michel went for £700,000 uh, to Clement Foot. And it meant that we had to figure out the goalkeeping. Now, we'd already bought one in, Luca Zidane, who a couple of the guys in the comments uh, were concerned about because he's quite a short goalkeeper. But look what Fabian Bartes did, for example. He was amazing and he um, won World Cups and he was quite a short goalkeeper, really. Now, Zidane was not the one that I wanted to base my goalkeeping starting position round anyway. He was going to come and provide backup, really. So we needed to go and get another first-choice goalkeeper having already now lost Michel. 
um, who I didn't want to sell at all. I was happy for him to stick around, but the club sold him for the fee that came in, so we had to go and figure it out. And in the end, because of the finances of the club, which are genuinely dreadful at the moment, we had to go and loan rather than buy. And we went to AC Milan and took one of their young goalkeepers, Alessandro Plizari, um, and he's come in and he's got a few gaps in his mentals and a little bit in his technicals, which is mm, fine. But his mentals are a little bit low here and there that I'd like. But the rest of it, there's a decent enough goalkeeper in here. And he's proving it so far, having come in and played five games for us, letting three goals. Um, and we are doing really well in terms of our league form, in terms of goals conceded. So he started pretty well. So that was the, the, the necessity and there are two more that have come into the club, or is it three more? Two more, because this uh, guy at the bottom here is a youngster that was brought in uh, by others into my uh, lower league side, my lower age side, should I say. So there's two more t um, members of the team to uh, that have come in since you and I were together, and it's these two. First off, we did get the central midfielder that I was really, really trying to hunt for all of the summer, and in the last minute, this guy, uh, Aurelian Chouameni, uh, that's what we're going to go with, Chouameni. Um, so he came into the club on a, a loan from Monaco. I'd been chasing this guy all summer long because I wanted somebody to play in the role that he's playing and he had good across-the-board attributes, I felt, and was a reasonable player for the level that we're playing at. But Monaco were playing hardball and weren't releasing him on loan at all for quite a lot of it, even though they weren't really going to use him either. And he'd been on loan last season. Eventually, they opened up just in the last few days of the transfer window and we were able to take him. Um, and so we've got uh, Shua Meni uh, into the team for, the, uh, for this season on loan, which is great. And the other one that we brought in was a free transfer. And the free transfer is this guy, uh, Yanga Mbiwa. And he comes in. He was somebody I was looking at all of last season, uh, trying to get him on loan, <clears throat> excuse me, from Lyon. Then the problem that we had last season was that he was on a really high wage at Lyon. He was on 55 grand a week. Um, and they weren't really playing him, but there's a good central defender in here. 31 years old, so he's not a young guy, but I think there was some good um, attributes in here for a decent central defender. And I thought at the level that we're playing at, to get him on loan from Leon last season would have been great. So I tried in both the summer and the January transfer window last season and couldn't get him because of those wage issues. But then they released him on a free transfer at the end of his contract and he was sitting free for quite a while. And I watched and watched and then made my move in the last few uh, days of the uh, transfer window just to see whether it was possible because I thought he was an upgrade on what we had. And it was. And he only asked for £5,750 per week which is extraordinary considering what he was on at Leon. Anyway, so in the end, we managed to do a deal for him. So uh, Yanga Mbiwa comes into the squad as well. So those were the three that we did since you and I were together. And it has reshaped the side a little bit. Um, so Plizari has played most of the goals in game. Zidane has played a couple as well. Um, so that's fine. He's still getting a little bit of game time, but Plizari is going to be the number one choice goalkeeper. Um, but Mbiwa comes straight into the central defence alongside Suprayan and it's um, uh, Briggery that drops out of the side and he just went down the pecking order a little bit. I, I like Danny Wilson as a replacement. So um, it's just reshaped that central defence. In midfield, it shaped it quite a lot. Originally, we were playing Herrera in this role and Ungando uh, in this role and I wasn't overly happy with that but... Herrera was just a better player in, in this role than uh, anyone else I could find. So, in the end, we brought uh, Shuameni in and it meant that he could play in this role, in the central midfield role, and we could put uh, Herrera across into the Metzala role. And that works better for this central midfield. And they've been doing really, really well. And you can see the average ratings are up across the side a little bit, which is very good. And the one miss is still Yanis, unfortunately. He's still out for another game or two, but he's doing fantastically well when he was playing. So hopefully he can come back in and, and perform well. You can see that the other youngster hasn't quite hit the ground running. He's got one goal in seven games, has been playing okay here and there, but just needs a little bit of time.
I think, really. And playing alongside Le Bihan hasn't really worked out too well. He's come in and not got a goal in the couple of games that he's played, and none of the others have really set the place like uh, Murdy, for example, come in and got none in five substitute appearances and one start. So it's just Yanis that we're waiting for, really. Once he's back, hopefully things will settle back down and we can score a few more goals than we have been showing recently. But we haven't got him today, and we do have a really, really big game against Lorient. We've seen them at the top of the table. So it's going to be tricky, but we've gone as strong as I can. I've rotated the squad around a little bit. You can see most have played at least a game or two. So they're mostly fit to play. So we, our first team is pretty much out today. So it's Plizari in goal, uh, Mbiwa and Suprayan in central defence, with Setu at right back, Botto at left back, Adiotti, uh, Shuameni, Herrera and Saki in central midfield with Labihan and Mercier up top and a bench of Wilson, Gaspar, Bernard, Belogu, Ngando, Sorgic and Murdi. So let's get into today's game and see what happens. So we've gone assertively with let's show, uh, show us what you can do, put the pressure on them to perform on a big occasion. We're at home. We've got to take advantage of that. Lorient are a decent side, top of the division. Absolutely they are. But we can perform, if we can perform well, then we're in with a chance. And early on, they had a really good chance, Lorient, didn't they? Uh, the free kick comes in and the header goes back across the goal. And it doesn't quite manage to go over the line. And we scramble it clear. But an early sign of the pressure from Lorient. So we've got to get the ball and try and create our own chances if possible. 16 minutes in, you can see they've had four shots at goal and we've yet to register one at all. So it's not been fantastic. Plizari gets it away from goal, but only into the right fullback area of Lorient. So they pick up the loose ball and they come back at us down this right-hand side. Um, can we hold the shape? And we, we, we do win it in central midfield. And then we go over the top early for Mercier. And there is the youngster scoring a goal on an episode. Fantastic. He's, he's got a lot of potential with him. He's just taking a little bit of time to bed in. But today, the ball goes really early over the top to, from Shuameni. And he takes it down really well. Gets it out from under his feet. And then right-footed cuts it across the goal. And puts it into that far corner. And a really very nice goal to, make, uh, to take us to 1-0. Having had all of the pressure on us for the first 15 minutes or so. Um, and Lorient just couldn't quite convert any of their chances at that point. They're still continuing though. The pattern of the game has not really changed too much. They're having a load more chances than we are. And they've got a little bit more possession than we have as well. But we've got that one goal leading into half-time. Uh, yellow card for, t for Satu. So we've got to watch out for that a little bit. But other than that... It's been a bit of a flat performance, but a really good piece of skill from uh, uh, Shua Meni to get the ball over the top. And Mercio ran onto it and put it away nicely. So calmly, we're going to say, let's, ooh, which one are we going to go for? Guard against complacency. That's the one we're going to go for. And just put the focus back on them. And we're going to go into the shouts and we're going to praise them for what they've managed to do so far and just see if we can get some extra motivation from them for the second half. But the the, court, the cross comes in from Lorient from the free kick and they had a, uh, a decent enough header at goal, but it was straight down the sides of Plazari and he plucks the ball out of air with, the air with no problems and he goes long to Le Bihan and he does his target man duties and puts it off to Mercier very nicely. Hold on to the ball. They do. They get it out of... <laughs> What a strike that was, I think, from Saki in the end. And again, it worked its way up top. Le Bihan held the ball up brilliantly. Mercier took over from him at this point here. Held the play again very nicely. Didn't rush at all. Drops it back into midfield to Shuameni. Again, the setup from him. Drops it off to the side. And Saki, from about 25 yards out, blasts the ball at the goal. And it goes straight into the back of the net. And we take a 2-0 lead. And that was a fantastic goal. Really nice play and a brilliant finish. 68 minutes in. We're going to think about making a couple of substitutions now. See if we can protect this lead a little bit. Herrera not having the greatest game and is a little bit low in conditioning. We've been battling with him for that ever since the season started. He came in slightly jaded and hasn't had enough of a rest here and there to properly be at his best. So we'll have to work on that a little bit. But he's done pretty well for us in terms of what he's contributed to the squad. 
but now needs a little bit of protecting at the end of games, uh, just a small amount. So two on that yellow card, we're going to take him out as well and protect him from getting sent off. Um, and we've got one more that we can make, and it has to be Lebihan, um, who up top is not playing particularly fantastically well today. And so we're going to bring the pressing forward on Omerdi on instead and just give him a run out for the last sort of 20 minutes of the game. He's played OK when he's coming. He's just not scored enough goals for my liking. Uh, and that's the case for most of my, of my strikers, really, other than, obviously, the injured Yanis, who are still waiting to get back into the side. That should happen in the next couple of games, though, I hope. Uh, so the, the point between now and the end of this calendar year, hopefully we can get some more goals from him. But there is a response goal at 76 minutes from Lorient. They calmly played the ball around in midfield, swept it out to the, right, uh, the wide right-hand side in the end. This ball here just coming up. He had plenty of space. It was closed down enough in the end, but still got the cross in. And the striker, uh, Courte, gets above the defenders, in between a couple of the defenders, wins the header and puts it calmly into that bottom corner. And we go 2-1 with a couple of minutes, uh, like eight minutes to play. Let's go into a slightly more cautious uh, way of playing. Hopefully we can ride the storm of this particular um, highlight and then hold out for the rest of the game the ball comes in and we do manage to just about scramble it clear but they win the loose ball again in midfield and bring it back at us down this left hand side the shape is good the personnel are there can we hold the play up we can't and how on earth did that go in the goal can somebody tell me what the goalkeeper was doing <laughs> it seemed to just dribble past him and he stood there and watched it and then all of a sudden thought oh i better uh, see if i can stop this and he just wasn't able to do it oh dear me the dive just wasn't good enough was it in the end and we have lost a two goal lead we're going to pause the game for a moment and just think about this because it's not good enough is it we're going to have to go back to very attacking and we're going to have to shout uh to demand more from them and then we're going to go into the tactics and we're just going to increase the pass length a little bit um, up to more direct um, and push up the, the tempo a little bit uh, and then shoot on sight. Those are the changes we're going to make to the, the style of play and just see if we can get anything as a chance for the last few games, uh, for the last few minutes of the game, should I say. But very disappointing. I mean, in the roundabout way, Lorient has deserved something from that. They dominated a lot of it. But we were 2-0 up. Oh. And it'll be performances like that in the end that leave us in like a playoff place again or something rather than automatic promotion if we're not very careful. We still got a point from the game, which, you know, is, is OK against the top side. But when you're 2-0 up, really disappointing in the end. So let's go into the team talk and tell them that assertively. I'm not happy with the way that that finished. We were at home. We had a 2-0 advantage. And in the last 10 minutes or so of the game... They really came back at us and eventually made their chances pay. Um, let's go into the analysis page and see where we lost this game because I suspect they were pretty uh, far ahead of us in a couple of the statistics. So let's check it out. So the mixed bag for the summary page, I mean, they had more shots than we did, quite a lot more. They had more on target, a few more. They had a reasonable amount of possession, but not a huge amount. It was only like a 6% swing there. Um, and 7.1 to 6.8 in the average ratings, we did them on that. We played well in bits, primarily because of how well um, our youngster Mercier played. But in the end, it didn't really count for much, did it? The analysis will show that um, they worked down the size of the pitch because that's where we're strong in the middle. We worked through the middle um, because they'd spread their play out and we're playing 4-4-2. Um, we had a reasonable amount of midfield possession, but not quite as much as I'd like, really. An attack through the centre of, the, of the, the pitch, as I said. So that's all kind of uh, as you'd expect it to be. Uh, let's go and check in on our passing accuracy. The intercepted passes, quite a few. Let's just click our own. Yeah, it's, there's quite a few. I mean, a lot of these are cleared. That's fine. But it's these ones we need to get uh, a few less for, really. Out of play ones, the, the, the directness um, isn't there anymore. We've shrunk the play down in terms of the, the length of our passing, so it should be more accurate. And I think it's demonstrating it. We're clearing the ball out from the penalty box, and that 
are goes out occasionally, but in the more attacking third of the pitch, not so many that are going out of bounds, which is good. Key passes all came from this central midfield area. The likes of Saki having one there. Uh, Shua Meni did a couple of really great balls through, didn't he? For pretty much both goals he set up. This one here, I suspect, and maybe this one for the long ball for Mercier. So two really key ones. Chances created. OK, there's a couple of chances there. And we didn't hit the woodwork. So in the, in the roundabout way, the passing wasn't too bad. It was reasonably accurate. We have to get rid of some of those interceptions. Um, let's check out on the aerial challenges. Are we able to cope with these? Headers won, a load in the penalty box. Few in midfield, um, not too bad. Not quite as many in, our, in the opposition box as maybe I'd like from the likes of Lebihan. But again, Yanis, when he comes back, will be uh, key for that as well. Headers lost. You see this group here, this this is where we didn't quite manage to make it work for us today um, in terms of winning the headers in the opposition box. Um, we did move, lose a couple, including one of those goals in, uh, in our own penalty box as well. Um, and key headers, loads in our penalty box. So a bit of a mixed bag, really, on the uh, aerial challenges. Um, and let's go for the shots at goal. Um, off target. We had one off target. Who's that one? That is Herrera with an off target one. There's the two goals. One from a screamer from outside and Mercier on the run through into the box. We didn't hit the woodwork. Five of them were saved all down this left hand side of the penalty box from the likes of Botto and Adiotti. Not really the guys you want to be shooting at goal really. Um, but still a couple from our strike force and then a couple blocked. Again from that slight left hand side as well of the penalty box. So those are kind of the things that we didn't do as well as we should have today to really get the, the, uh, the, the, the result across the line. So let's go in here and just take out them to look at our own. These are our shots at goal. And you can see one sailed over the top, one sailed uh, wide right. We hit the woodwork twice, it looks like. And that's unfortunate. And then a, a couple were saved as well. So... It's a little bit disappointing. I'm a little bit flat after that, to be honest, because um, I think ultimately I probably did some wrong stuff um, in terms of having protect to protect that lead a little bit earlier. But I thought we were in control of the game and would be able to see it out, basically. The vertical tiki-taka style, I thought, would suit just holding on to the ball. And we didn't manage to do it. And we lost the, 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 uh, the play in the last sort of 10, 15 minutes. They came into the game properly. Having dominated some of the attempts, they then made them count, didn't they? And unfortunately, that lost us to three points. We got one point, didn't lose any ground on them, which is positive for moving forward. But once you're 2-0 up, you really expect to win the game, don't you? We didn't manage it today. Disappointing. So we're going to leave the match day experience, go out and check what that's done to the league. It's dropped us down a couple of places. Um, Lorient maintain their position at the top of the table. We've dropped down to fourth. The likes of Amiens and Troy come uh, and take over uh, above us, uh, one point clear of us. But we're still well in with uh, a decent opportunity to get automatic promotion at this point in the season. We just need to continue the, the reasonable form that we've had to start this season and a little bit less of the draws that we've had in the last couple of games. Um, and hopefully Yanis will be back to help us do that. So we'll go through the news feed. Uh, Super Sub re um, rescues uh, Lorion, which is OK. Again, Herrera jaded. We're going to have to rest him a little bit and just get him properly up to match sharpness and match fitness to uh, properly impact the side uh, and the way that we play, maybe. So, unfortunately. But Ngando will have to come in and, and do a job for us. Saki really did impress today, didn't he? That long drive of a shot was fantastic uh, and did some other good stuff as well. Um, and people are spotted watching, that's fine. So let's just do one last thing and check out what we're going to be doing for next episode. And if we go into the schedule page, what we're going to do is we're going to play, uh, we're going to be playing big chunks of this off the camera, as I said to you last episode, just to get through before the end of FM20. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back and play Can in the last game of the calendar year. So I've got a big chunk of games to get through. And then when we come back from the, um, the new year, 
We're going to be playing the first game in February, probably the last game in March, and then the last game of the season as well. So another three episodes for the back half of the season and just get through this one quite quickly and see if we can get automatic promotion and spend a season in the top flight before the end of Football Manager 20. I suspect if we don't go up for whatever reason, um, then I suspect that will be the end of the series and I'll call it quits on Football Manager 20 content for, for a little while before the new game arrives. So that's where we're heading. But next up for us is that last game of the calendar year against Ken. I hope you'll join me for that. We sit fourth in the table now, still well in contention with the teams around us though, so it's looking decent for at least a playoff place, hopefully an automatic promotion place. Come back next episode and find out how we've done in that big chunk of games between the episodes. Uh, until then though, thanks for joining me today. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and join my United City community, the more the merrier. Click that like button for me, helps me get seen by lots of other people. Until next time though, take care of yourselves, I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.